Okay, at this time, can I please have everybody turn on their videos? Please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of May 13th, 2020. I am Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual meeting of the New York City if you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and we will now have roll call. Uh, is the clerk ready to call the roll? Does someone need to unmute the clerk? Mr. Sweeney? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. I'm blessed and present. Mm -hmm. Morelli. Morelli. Present. Thank you. Brannon. Present. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Uh, I'm here someplace. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. I'm here. Diaz. Presente. Drum. Hey, y'all, I got two more left. Yeah. Eugene. <laughs> Gibson. Present. I'm here. Jonai. Present. Kredenshik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lentzman. Present. Kalos. Lander. Whatever sort of here this is. <laughs> Levin. Present. Present. Here. Here. Levine. Present. They're getting to me soon. Lewis. Here. Mizell. You get me? Here. I got you. Thank you. Menchaca. Presente. Present. Miller. Getting to me soon. <laughs> Here. Moya. Perkins. Presente. Thank you. Powers. I'm here. Reynoso. Richards. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Prager. Here. Ulrich. Malone. Present. Van Bramer. I'm here. 
Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Humbo. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. And Mr. Clerk, I believe uh, Councilmember Drum wasn't muted uh, in time to say he was here, but he- Thank you. I've handed him to the roll. We have a quorum. Oh, we love shopping. It's our new favorite pastime. If, uh, if, the, if the folks that are muting could mute uh, folks that aren't speaking right now, that would be helpful. We're getting some background noise from people. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Imam Dr. Tahir Kujaj of the Albanian Islamic Cultural Center, located at 307 Victory Boulevard in Staten Island. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Corey Johnson, members of the New York City Council, public servants, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have been invited to offer the invocation as we gather remotely to begin our meetings today. In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful, praise be to God, Lord of the worlds, our creator, creator of the universe, known by many names. The compassionate, the merciful, rule of life on the day of reckoning. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help guide us on a straight path. The path of those who have received your grace, not the path of those who have brought down wrath, nor of those who wander astray. Our Lord, we ask you that you bless our city council and its members, bless our city, our state, and our great country, United States of America. God of justice and mercy, thank you for your countless blessings and gifts, the gift of life and opportunity to serve the people of our city. Help us to act with character and conviction. Help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help us to speak with charity and nobility. Give us a spirit of service. Remind us that we are stewards of your authority. Guide us to be the leaders that New York people need. Our Lord, remind our city council members that no matter where we live, everyone, regardless of race, gender, age, and other aspects, black or white, Hispanic or Asian, Christian, Muslim, Jew, Hindu, Sikh, or atheist, is our neighbor, our sibling in humanity. Grant our leaders the wisdom and courage to know and do what is right and good and true. May they and we speak out when it's time to speak out and listen patiently and receptively when it's the time to listen. May they and we always be guided by the spirit of community, by the spirit of justice and by the spirit of love. Our Lord, as we live through a difficult times, we ask you to bless all first responders, doctors, nurses, volunteers, social workers, philanthropists, humanitarian, bless our scientists to find the cure for this plague and every illness. Bless all those they respect instructions, stay home, stay safe. In your name, we make this prayer, amen. <clears throat> Thank you for that beautiful and very timely prayer. Um, Dr. Uh, Kujaj, we appreciate you and we appreciate the service that you do in Staten Island and beyond. I'd now like to ask Council Member Rose to spread the invocation onto the record. You're, you're unmuted, Debbie. Okay. Thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you, Imam Tahir. Uh, Dr. You. Tahir, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Dr. Tahir um, Kuki brings a diverse, multicultural background 
to my North Shore Community District, where he has been bringing people together for nearly two decades. He serves as the Vice President of the Albanian Islamic Cultural Center in Tompkinsville, as well as being a chaplain for New York City Police Department, and he's a member of the Mayor's Clergy Advisory Board. Imam Tahir is a powerful voice for immigrant rights and social justice in my district and across New York City. He's a healer who is always present when there is a need and he is a friend. The Imam is a skilled spiritual diplomat with the keen ability to focus on common beliefs and values for people of all faiths and traditions, a skill that we really need now in this fractured society. Every year he brings together various communities to break bread in friendship. And at these events, he reminds all of us of our common values that all people of all values and backgrounds in New York City hold dear. I would like to thank Imam Tahir for being here today um, during this holy month of Ramadan. And I make a motion that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Debbie Rose. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Adams. I hereby make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. We will now have messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M421, Queensborough President Budget Response. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday to all of you. Welcome to our second virtual stated meeting of the New York City Council. I hope that all of the members who were on this call, as well as the staff and anyone who's watching today, that you and your families are safe and healthy and well. I wanna begin by thanking the entire council, all of the members and all of their staff for their continuous efforts to make the work we are doing day in and day out possible. Uh, so many people have been working around the clock on the city's budget, on the bills we're voting on today, on keeping the stated uh, meeting up and going in a virtual way, our district offices serving our constituents, there have been so many people who have been working so hard. So I wanna thank everyone who works at the city council for their hard work. The work we're doing is so critically important and we have not let the social distancing that we need to do right now stop our work as members of this body. We know that New Yorkers are counting on us to step up and do everything we can for them. We will, as we have always done, continue to serve our districts, our communities and our neighborhoods. Each stated meeting, I take time and mention the deaths that our city has faced during the last time we met. Uh, these days, it becomes even more grim as we lose more New Yorkers at such a rapid rate. As of yesterday, we've lost more than 20,000 New Yorkers to this terrible virus. This includes so many of our civil servants who have committed their lives to serving the people of our great city. We've lost so many people that work at the Department of Education or MTA workers. I won't go through every agency, but every agency uh, has been touched by this. And we are holding all of those families in our hearts and in our hands to get through these difficult days. The FDNY uh, lost two retired members of their family to 9-11 related illnesses since our last stated meeting. Retired firefighter Paul J. Greco passed away on, on May 6th. And the department also lost retired Lieutenant Kevin C. Dunn on May 7th. My heart is with the families and friends of Lieutenant Dunn and firefighter Greco and the entire fire department 
I wanted to take a moment of silence for all of the New Yorkers that we have lost to COVID-19, as well as Lieutenant Dunn and Firefighter Greco. Thank you. This month is also uh, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It's a time for us to celebrate the rich history and achievements of the AAPI community. Unfortunately, we have seen significant discrimination, harassment against Asian New Yorkers these last many months, a big increase. And I wanna take this opportunity to assure every Asian New Yorker that the entire city council stands with you. The fear of COVID-19 should not be used as an excuse of any harassment or discrimination of any kind, especially against Asian New Yorkers. I'm particularly proud of today's legislative agenda because we are voting on bills to help small businesses and restaurants survive this crisis. Small businesses and restaurants are the heart and soul of our city. They were struggling before COVID hit and this shutdown has been catastrophic for so many of them. We knew we had to act or we would lose many of the shops and restaurants that make our city and our neighborhood so special for those of us who live here, but also for the people who visit our city. This is not the time for our restaurants to pay high fees, nor should any COVID impacted businesses be exploited by their landlords. Introduction 1932, will prevent commercial landlords from going after business owners' personal assets. When I met with some restaurant owners last month, virtually, we learned that this is one of the top issues keeping them up at night. It's awful. Losing your business is hard enough, but imagine someone coming after your home as well while your business is closed. I'm glad we're voting to put an end to that today, and I wanna thank the restaurant industry for raising this issue. This legislation will benefit all kinds of business owners and our city will be better off because of it. I'm proud of this package and I wanna thank the restaurant industry and small business owners for working collaboratively with the council to find solutions. I also wanna thank everyone at the council for recognizing the urgency of these relief bills and for all of us collectively and moving quickly to bring them to a vote. So let's dive into today's stated agenda. The first two bills are bills coming out of our Consumer Affairs Committee. And I wanna thank our chair, Andy Cohen, for doing a great job in the hearings that we've had. At the moment, the requirement to renew certain licenses and permits required for a business to operate has been suspended pursuant to an executive order. Uh, this first bill sponsored by Minority Leader Matteo and co-primed by Councilmember Yeager would require city agencies to publish a list of any licenses, permits, consents, or registrations that are not covered by the renewal extension. And renewal deadlines for any license or permit cannot be earlier than 45 days after the suspension ends. The next bill proposed introduction 1916A, sponsored by Council Member Andrew Cohen, would require the city to waive and refund all revocable consent fees for unenclosed sidewalk cafes that are due between March 1st, 2020 and February 28th, 2021. Revocable consent fees for enclosed sidewalk cafes would be waived for the duration of the mayor's executive order, which is executive order 105, which was published on April 4th, 2020. This is a common sense measure and it's really gonna help restaurants during this difficult time. I wanna thank the staff who worked on both of those bills, Balkis Mirig. I wanna thank her for her hard work. Next, the council will be voting on legislation <clears throat> that will help residential tenants who are facing crushing financial hardships. Proposed introduction number 1936A, sponsored by Councilman Richie Torres and myself, would expand the definition of harassment to include threats against an individual based on their status as a COVID-19 impacted person their status as an essential employee or their receipt of a rental concession or forbearance. It's imperative that we step up to ensure that tenants are not harassed 
or forced out of their homes during these difficult times. And I wanna thank from my staff, Kelly Taylor, for her hard work on that bill. As I said earlier, we'll be voting on a small business relief package that really steps up and provides much needed relief for these impacted businesses. We cannot continue to wait for the federal government to step up and do their jobs. Restaurants have seen a massive decline in customers since they were forced to stop dining orders. Some are not open at all. Some are doing takeout and delivery. And with so many of them having to switch to takeout and delivery only, the following two bills are an effort to alleviate some of the burden that this has caused them and ensure they can thrive as much as possible during this crisis. Proposed introduction number 1898A, sponsored by our small business uh, chair, Mark Joni, would prohibit third party delivery platforms for charging for telephone orders in which a transaction did not take place. Violations of the prohibitions in this bill would be subject to civil penalties of up to $500 per day per restaurant which has put forward unlawfully, unlawful charges. And I wanna thank Chair Joni for chairing uh, the hearing recently on these bills. The next bill proposed introduction number 1908B sponsored by Councilmember Francisco Moya would restrict the fees that third party food delivery services may charge restaurants during states of emergency when restaurants are prohibited from offering food for consumption on premises. Delivery services would be prohibited from charging more than 15% per order for providing delivery services to a restaurant and separately more than 5% per order for other charges. Violations of the prohibitions in this bill would be subject to civil penalties of up to $1,000 per restaurant per day. Both of these bills will be in effect for 90 days following the conclusion of the state of emergency and I wanna thank Stephanie Jones uh, from the staff for her work on both of those bills. Lastly, I worked on the following two bills closely with colleagues in an effort to ensure our small business owners are not facing financial ruin during this crisis. That is something our small business owners should not be concerned about right now. We need New York to come back stronger than ever and our small businesses make us strong. The first proposed introduction number 1932A sponsored by Councilmember Carlina Rivera and myself, would suspend personal liability provisions in leases for businesses that were impacted by the mandated closures and service limitations in the governor's executive orders like bars, restaurants, and retail shops. And finally, we're providing protections against the harassment that these tenants may face during the pandemic. Proposed introduction number 1914A sponsored by Councilmember Adrian Adams and myself would make threatening a commercial tenant based on their status as a COVID-19 impacted business, a form of harassment punishable by a civil penalty of up to $10,000 to $50,000. I wanna thank the staff who worked on these bills, Kelly Taylor and the rest of her team. And with that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back to you. And again, I just wanna uh, thank the Imam for his a really beautiful invocation today. And I wanna thank all of you for working so collaboratively during these difficult days. Uh, thank you very much. I'm grateful to all of this work that we're doing together. And I turn it back to you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson and all my colleagues for this very impactful legislation. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will first recognize council members who signed up by email and then recognize members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Madam Majority Leader, Minority Leader Matteo, Council Member Adams and Council Member Joe and I are the first three on the list for discussion of general orders. Thank you, Council Member uh, Minority Leader Matteo. Thank you, Majority Leader. Good afternoon, I'm colleagues. This ongoing crisis has been terrible for all walks of life, and the toll on our physical and mental health is in some ways still beyond reckoning. As public health is and always will be the top priority, it is also imperative that we aid in the challenges of economic recovery. 
Small businesses are the backbone of our communities and the engine of our local and national economy. They employ more than half of our city's workforce and most of our residents. They provide important and unique services and products and their owners support the not-for-profits that enhance our neighborhood's quality of life to a level that government can never accomplish on its own. We have to support them as they get back on their feet so they can continue to fill that vital role in New York City. That is why I authored intro 1940 on today's agenda. The administration deserves credit for extending permits, licenses, and the rest during the state of emergency, but we needed to work for clarity and a certain process for when it's over. Now businesses will know for sure whether each of their permits and licenses have been extended during this period, as well as both how and when to renew them. Many will see 45 days after this emergency is over to operate on permits before having to renew permits and licenses that could have otherwise expired with the mayor's executive orders. I wanna thank the many who made today's vote possible, Speaker Johnson, Chairs Joni and Cohen, co-sponsor Yeager, Jason Goldman, Jeff Baker, Valkis Marie, Kenny Grace from the administration and my chief of staff, David Carr. Thank you and I ask that my colleagues join me in support of this bill. Thank you so much, Council Member Matteo. We will now have Council Member Adams. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon. My bill, Introduction 1914, would make threatening a commercial tenant based on their status as a COVID-19 impacted business or person a form of harassment punishable by a civil penalty of $10,000 up to $50,000. Our businesses, especially small businesses, are important to our neighborhoods. These businesses are really suffering right now as they're forced to adapt to the new normal. We need to act now to protect the businesses that make our neighborhoods vibrant and build the character of our communities. Unfortunately, thousands of businesses in our city are suffering as they've been forced to close due to COVID-19. As availability of federal loans is limited, many businesses are unable to pay their rent. This leaves them vulnerable to harassment from landlords looking to find ways to collect or to just get the tenant to voluntarily abandon the property so they can find tenants willing and able to pay those higher rents. The threat of harassment will particularly impact the city's small, independently owned and immigration owned business, many of whom we're operating on thin margins and struggling to pay rent even before this crisis began. So I thank the speaker for his support on these efforts and his leadership. I thank all of my colleagues who have bills in this important legislative package. And I honestly encourage my colleagues to support commercial tenant protections and vote in favor of intro 1914. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Adams, for this critical piece of legislation. I'd now like to call on the Chair of Small Business Services, who has been a tireless advocate uh, for our small businesses, Council Member Joni. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you for those kind words. I want to first thank uh, Imam Kukai for his wonderful blessing and compassionate words. He's a dear friend, and the work that he does is truly remarkable, not only for Staten Island, but throughout the city and the state. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson for his leadership on this issue. I want to thank my good friend, Councilman Francisco Moya, for being such a passionate fighter to protect our city's struggling restaurants during this time of crisis. There are a number of significant COVID-19 related rescue bills that this body will likely pass today. And I want to congratulate my colleagues who have the bills before us. I'd like to focus on two bills in particular, the one that I'm very proud of, Intro 1908, which will cap the commission's charge by third-party food delivery platforms to 5% for non-delivery service and up to 15% for delivery. This will bring significant relief to local restaurants that are struggling to stay afloat, who are now paying these platforms as high as 33% for every order. I'm also proud to sponsor intro 1898 that would le levy hefty fines every time a food delivery company erroneously charges a restaurant for phone orders that never took place. This bill will help restaurants keep more of their money to invest back into their businesses and employees as they seek ways to keep their doors open. See, this isn't a question about thriving, it's a question about surviving. And what we're doing today is helping these small businesses survive this crisis. It will do this by not only allowing delivery companies to take money that was never theirs in the first place, Late last year, 31 of you in this body signed onto a letter 
asking one of the companies to stop predatory practice or face a legislative solution. That company chose to ignore this body's call to do the right thing. So I'm proud that we as a body are taking the steps to right this wrong. Time. And while I'm grateful that we're providing this much needed immediate relief to restaurants looking for a lifeline during this pandemic, I remain confident that we will pass the full slate of bills that we're introducing early this year and will bring permanent relief to small mom and pop shops just looking for their fair playing field and use the service of these venture capital backed Silicon Valley tech behemoths. I want to thank my chief of staff, Reggie Johnson, for his hard work on this issue. I want to thank Small Business Committee Council, Stephanie Jones, Josh Kingsley, and Policy Analyst Noah Mixler for, help, for all their, their tireless help. I want to thank Irene Bohosky, who's no longer with the committee, for our hard work as she was instrumental in the work that we're doing here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Joni. We will now hear from Council Members Rivera, Cohen, and Rodriguez. Time starts now. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Majority Leader, for the time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly on my bill that we are voting on today, Intro 1932A, which would prohibit the enforcement of personal liability provisions and commercial leases or rental agreements involving a COVID-19 impacted tenant. I have heard from countless small business owners these past few weeks from Melba Wilson, owner of Melba's restaurant in Harlem, to Mario, the owner of Folia in my district, to Gabriel Stolman, who went from making cheesesteaks as a line cook to being a successful restaurateur, to now worrying about going belly up, about the very real possibility that their stores may have to change or even never return after this pandemic ends. We've already lost one historic business in my district, Gem Spa, which was near and dear to my heart. I remember hanging out there as a teenager on the Lower East Side and being reminded by the energy of that place that I, as a New Yorker, was part of something much bigger and cooler than any one of us. And I know we all have places and stores like that in our districts where we that, that same feeling is evoked. So while my bill will not be able to bring back Gem Spa or any other business that we lose, it can ensure that the owners who poured years and dreams into these storefronts do not have to face a landlord going after their personal life savings and assets because of a disaster no one saw coming. Now, I certainly understand that landlords are also facing struggles and that small and nonprofit landlords need further financial support. But I also find it in a moral and ethical failure that anyone would seek to take every last bit of someone's savings in the middle of a disaster, even after they've taken their businesses to the point of bankruptcy. It's wrong, plain and simple. This is a large national emergency and this pandemic certainly legally and morally qualifies us to take swift and immediate action. I wanna thank the entire legal legislative and council team who worked on this bill, including Kelly Taylor, Stephanie Time. Jones, Jason Goldman, Jeremy Unger, uh, and my chief of staff, Pedro Carrillo, who just had a baby with his wife, Tiffany Townsend. Uh, we will continue the fight and, and urge Albany and Washington to also provide aid. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. Uh, and thank you for your mention of so many restaurants that are dear to all of us. Uh, Council Member Cohen, followed by Council Member Rodriguez. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, it is good to see everybody. Uh, and I just briefly uh, want to say, uh, uh, that I'm really proud that we came up with a piece of legislation that I think is targeted, uh, that really, that this industry, obviously the restaurant industry is profoundly impacted. Uh, I think it's uh, physically responsible, uh, allowing sidewalk cafes, the access, not having to pay those fees, I think could play a role also ultimately uh, in the recovery, uh, being able to use the space if we have to limit capacity in restaurants as is likely. Uh, having the outdoor space will make a real difference in being able to uh, to utilize uh, the restaurant. Uh, so I'm just very, very grateful that uh, we were able to get this done. I think it's been a challenge to come up with good legislation uh, that is COVID responsive. I really want to thank the speaker for his support. He was supportive the whole way through. Uh, the staff also, uh, Balkis, Merga, my uh, uh, legislative director, Patty and Trader. Uh, and again, I encourage all my colleagues to vote aye and uh, thank you very much. Council member Rodriguez. Time starts now. Uh, for me, for permission to explain my vote. 
And I first of all, we're not voting. This is just general uh, discussing on general orders, discussing any of the bills that we're voting on today. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank so you. definitely, you know, I, I, as a member also of the Small Business Committee, together with the Chairman Joner, I think that in having so many restaurants in not only Northern Manhattan, but as you know, in, in all the areas that we've been working within, especially during this time of coronavirus, I feel it is important, you know, to have our colleague, the speaker, and everyone uh, being able to put good bills for this uh, bad time that we have in our society where restaurants and, and being hurt so much. So hopefully, again, I hope that the private sector that provides those services or uh, Uber and others so that restaurants being able to get their, their service for them to provide the connection with the, with the uh, consumers understand that this is the time for them to understand that we cannot continue with a system where they take so much, a high, so high percent to benefit those corporations. But this is a time where we need to protect our local small businesses. We need to protect with those bills and other things that we need to do, especially at this time. So thank you to the speaker. Thank you to our colleague. And I know that this is something that our small business owner, the restaurant owner, are desperately waiting for. And I hope again that all our colleagues will be voting for this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rodriguez, and to all of my colleagues for this critical package of legislation that's really going to provide relief to so many of our businesses. We'll now have report of special committees. None. None. I think you can call the next one, Lori. Presiding officer with me, general orders. No, the next one is standing committees. Reports of standing committees. Can someone unmute, uh, let me unmute the clerk. There you go, Jonathan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 1916A, Sidewalk Cafe, cafe Fees. Amended and coupled on general orders. Reconsidered Intro 1940, Renewal Extensions. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1936A, Expanding the Definition of Harassment. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, intros 1898A and 1908B, third party food delivery services. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1914A and 1932A, commercial tenants impacted by COVID-19. Amended and coupled on general orders. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. We'll now have general orders. Uh, will, the, will the clerk please take a roll call vote on all of the items that are coupled on today's general orders calendar. We are voting now on all of the bills that have been mentioned. Adam. I proudly vote aye on all. I'm Bree Samuel. Thank you so much colleagues on the bills today and on behalf of the New Yorkers. Thank you so much. You make me proud and we're going to get through this. I vote aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Joe, be quiet for one minute. Baron. I vote aye on all. Borelli. I vote aye on all except 1898A 1908B, 1914A, 1932A, and 1936A. Thank you. Brennan. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Uh, Adam, majority leader. Permission granted. I'm starts now. 
Thank you. Uh, great job uh, to my colleague, Councilman Moya on 1908. I believe this is a very, very fair bill. It's gonna help a lot of our local restaurants. And I think actually uh, it's gonna end up creating more business for our restaurants and for our delivery workers because the lower fees will actually hopefully get more restaurants to use these apps. Um, as the husband of a small business owner that is drowning right now, uh, many of these bills are very, very personal to me. Uh, uh, 1932A with regard to personal liability for commercial leases. I still have some concerns that this bill may end up helping Louis Vuitton as much as it helps Louis Pizza, um, but it is a very, very much needed measure during this unprecedented time. Um, and in that spirit, and um, with thanks to uh, Speaker Johnson for all his leadership and the absence of uh, leadership and every other level of government, um, I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. I vote aye on all. Cohen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. I vote aye on all. Thank you, Councilman. Okay, great. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts now. First of all, I want to congratulate uh, also Francisco Moya. I think that that is a measure that's absolutely necessary. I was getting calls in my office from a lot of small businesses on that. And um, quite frankly, you beat me to the punch. But uh, congratulations on that, Bill. And just I want to say to uh, Jonathan, is, uh, is that your kids' headphones that you're using? <clears throat> uh, Council McCornigan, do you want to keep going? <laughs> no, 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 I vote aye. Okay. I'm waiting to hear from Jonathan, though, but I vote aye. I'm sure those are his kids' headphones. <clears throat> Deutsch. No on intro 1932 and I and the rest. Diaz. Si en todo. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Uh, I would I on Gibson. With my warmest congratulations and gratitude for all the hard work of my colleagues and the speaker and all of the staff in the ledge division, thank you for putting together this package of bills to really help a lot of our small businesses and many New Yorkers. I vote I on all. Joe Nye. I on all. Gordenchik. Uh, I on all with the exception of 1932 and 1936A. Those are no's. Thank you. Holden. I on all. Kalos. With congratulations to the bill sponsors, I hope we can get these protections done for not only the coronavirus pandemic, but year round. And I vote aye on all. King. Commission, explain my vote. I heard your lips, Laurie. I heard your lips. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you to uh, Carlina, to Francisco, and Mark. I know everyone has worked on these bills for, for all the small businesses I've been working with and having complaints, trying to figure out their survival tactics. These le pieces of legislation make sense. And, uh, and thank you again. So I vote aye. God bless. What happened to that chicken holding? Cool. I 
And congratulations to all the bill sponsors. <laughs> Kozlowitz. I vote aye and congratulations to my colleagues on these wonderful bills. Lampman. Aye. Thank you. Lander. I'm really grateful to the sponsors for putting forward this really thoughtful package of bills to help save our small businesses and really save our communities. And I hope they'll be just a first step. I was really encouraged by yesterday's conversation between Councilmember Powers. Uh, and Chair uh, Commissioner Trottenberg about the possibility of getting our streets open for restaurants to be outdoors so we can really help them come back. Uh, these bills are a great first step and there's so much more that we have to do. Thanks to the sponsors, I vote aye on all. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. With congrats to all the sponsors of these great bills, I vote aye on all. Lewis. Congratulations to all the bill sponsors and for your commitment to small businesses here in New York City. I vote aye on all. Maisel. Yes. Menchaca. Thank you to all the sponsors for the bills today to protect the future of our small businesses in our neighborhoods. Uh, I especially want to give a shout out to all the small businesses who reached out from the district, especially in Red Hook, where the Business Association continues to bring beautiful ideas uh, to the council for our work. Uh, and uh, especially Susan Povich, who runs the Lobster Pound. Uh, thank you. Uh, and don't stop reaching out. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Miller. Um, uh, I want to congratulate my colleagues on, on some really thoughtful bills. Uh, this is just the beginning, but this is what happens when we engage our community. We do better. Uh, so I vote aye on all. Moya. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Speaker Corey Johnson, uh, Chair uh, Joe Knight for uh, their support uh, on this uh, important piece of legislation that uh, we're moving forward today uh, and my colleagues as well. Uh, but I in particular want to uh, thank uh, the legislative staff, uh, specifically uh, Stephanie Jones uh, and Megan Taddeo from my office who've worked uh, so hard to get this uh, bill done. Uh, thank you to my colleagues again for their support. But again, I want to thank uh, all those who are looking to make sure that we're protecting New York City mom and pop restaurants during this uh, extraordinary time where we're seeing the exorbitant fees of billion dollar tech companies uh, charging these restaurants these uh, ridiculous amounts of money. Um, when I talk to restaurant owners around the city uh, who have partnered with third party food apps like Grubhub uh, to the person, they tell you the same thing. Uh, these apps are killing them uh, with these exorbitant fees. It's contrary to what their uh, expensive ads suggest. These tech companies aren't restaurant industry saviors. They're making them uh, out to be. They're, they're about to profit at all costs. And to me, this cutthroat strategy ends up killing the restaurants uh, that they're feeding off of. And now that COVID uh, didn't create this problem, uh, but like many and other, like so many others uh, issues, it's dramatically made it worse. The commission fees for food apps could reach 30% or higher, exceeding the already razor thin profit margin of many restaurants. If third party food delivery apps were uh, nibbling away at uh, neighborhood restaurants before COVID, they're bleeding them dry now. Uh, and that's because uh, this bill uh, would actually uh, change uh, what, would, what is going on today. And 1908 would specifically address uh, COVID times and declared state of emergencies so we can provide the critical uh, and immediate relief uh, for those uh, restaurants that most need it by putting uh, the caps uh, and its fees uh, at 15% and 5% for all the fees uh, and marketing fees as well. So I wanna thank my colleagues, central staff again for their support on this issue. Uh, and on behalf of myself and the locally owned restaurants in my community uh, across the city of New York. Thank you. I'll be voting uh, aye on all. 
Thank you. Perkin. Thank you. I on all and special congratulations to all the sponsors and uh, keep the faith. Powers. Uh, just permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm Thank sorry. you. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to say congratulations to all my colleagues on these bills, which are going to be very meaningful to small business owners in the city yeah, as we deal with a public health crisis that was completely unpredictable to them. And as they face many more challenges, whether it's our business insurance or federal uh, PPP and other issues that are in the city. Um, I want to recognize also the staff here, Jason, Kelly, I think Ed and others who worked really hard and I think over time on these bills to make sure that they addressed a lot of the concerns and a lot of the stakeholder input and a lot of work that went be in, in beyond, beyond, beyond to make sure that these bills um, were, were, were smart and responsible. So I wanna thank everybody who worked on it. Um, and you know whether it's waiving fees or capping deliveries at a time when this is really their only source of revenue or ensuring that personal liability clauses and leases don't cause an individual to lose their livelihood. I think these steps real take that we're taking today are gonna really make sure small businesses don't get crushed during a really difficult time for many of them. And as many of them are, are figuring out their futures here. And I also wanna reiterate, I think, you know, I think now is a time to focus also on the future of our restaurants and our nightlife. We should consider opening up our sidewalks and our streets and our open spaces to restaurants as part of the recovery maintain these delivery and takeout rules that we put in place, the states put in place in the post-COVID world, figure out ways to manage capacity responsibly as places reopen and, and be creative and flexible in helping businesses that are gonna be the last ones to open. So this today is a good, I think a good way to help them now not to lose their livelihood. And I think we should continue working on ways that we can make sure that as they reopen, they can you know, increase their revenue and be able to operate in a responsible way. I vote aye on all the bills proudly. Thank you. Reynoso. Aye. Richard. Uh, thank you, permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm starting to Thank you, and just wanted to congratulate uh, all of my colleagues on all of these great bills. Uh, when you look at this recovery, and I think we look at the numbers that Small Business Services has put out on uh, the retention and grants program, how 7% of the retention and loans that have gone out through that program have gone to Queens, but yet 56% of uh, the, the resources have gone to Manhattan. This really has to be a recovery that works for every borough and certainly works for every corner of our city. Uh, so these bills are certainly a step in the right direction, but let's not you know, end here. We got a lot more work to do to make sure that our small businesses are being treated fairly across New York City. And this is certainly a step in the right direction, but a lot more work that needs to be done. So I wanna congratulate my colleagues um, for all of their hard work in passing these measures. And I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote very briefly. Permission granted. Time starts now. Great, thank you. So we all know that our small businesses have taken uh, a major hit since the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis. And I truly do think we have to do everything in our power uh, to make sure that they survive this virus and that they can continue to provide for their own families. I know that they desperately want to bring their workers back onto the payroll and they want to be there with that extended family of all of their employees and of course all of the neighborhoods that treasure them so deeply. So I'm very, very proud to be passing intro 1932 and I hope that we can also use our my open streets legislation uh, to further address the needs of, of promoting safe social distancing and also helping to bolster the economy. I probably vote aye on all and congratulations to everyone. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I, I want to dedicate my vote to the restaurant owners, those who've been serving in those sick codes where people have been dying in high number, but we have the high numbers of volume, those who continue 
delivering food to other New Yorkers, especially those owners also that been working with the undocumented brothers and sisters. They the one who are part of the essential workers. Those who come out from the restaurant at 11 and 12, and then they have to be cleaning at, at those places and they need to take the trains. They need mass transportation. So thank you to Speaker Johnson, our colleague, but especially to the men and women who have made the determination to open those restaurants to provide the service and especially to undocumented brothers and sisters. We owe them a lot. And I hope that this is only a beginning. And I hope also that I can get the support of my colleague to very soon pass the Small Business Jazz Survival Act. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote, please. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Um, I, I just found out that one of my favorite businesses is closing um, due to um, all of the unpredictable stressors, um, economic stressors that have presented themselves throughout this pandemic. And um, I'm only sorry that this, this package of bills and the package that we passed at the last stated hadn't happened sooner um, because I believe that we might have been able to save a lot more businesses. But I wanna thank all of my colleagues for this very thoughtful package of bills that um, will serve to protect our small businesses who really are suffering through this pandemic. And for recognizing that our small businesses are really the backbone of our economy. So again, I thank Speaker Johnson and all of the authors of these bills. Um, and I vote aye on all. Rosenthal. I vote aye on all with congratulations to Speaker Johnson, all of his staff, and to the bill sponsors um, who really got out of the gate fast on these. Congratulations for all your good work. Salamanca. Aye on all. Torres. Permission to exp explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. I just want to say I'm, I'm honored to be the prime sponsor of the anti-harassment legislation and proud to be part of a city council that's been at the cutting edge of legislating in a time of social distancing. You know, I'm proud that we're acting decisively to protect tenants from harassment, from any unscrupulous actors who are exploiting the crisis for their own benefit. And so I want to thank my colleagues, the speaker of the city council, uh, Robert Carnegie, the chair of the Housing and Buildings Committee, and I proudly vote aye on every bill. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. And I want to commend all my colleagues on their important pieces of legislation today. And just uh, when we're talking about small businesses, I want to remind my colleagues that there are certain communities in New York City that we're still dealing with the aftermath of Superstorm Sandy about eight years uh, later. Uh, neighborhoods like Coney Island that is still trying to come back from Superstorm Sandy in this pandemic has made our situation that much more challenging. I wanna remind my colleagues that there are seasonal economies like in Coney Island that did not even qualify for the PPP because their businesses are not really taking off in March or in April they really start kicking off in the summer in many cases. So we need to be mindful of every region of New York City. New York City is five boroughs. It's not just Manhattan. And there's a part of New York City called Southern Brooklyn that cannot be forgotten. So I commend my colleagues on their bills, but we must do a lot more to support every region, particularly regions that were hard hit by Sandy that are still recovering from the worst storm in history and now are trying to recover from this pandemic. And with that, I vote aye and all. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote no on 1908B, 1914A, and 1932A, and aye on all others. Thank you. Valone. 
Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Just quickly wanted to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, for this unprecedented second successful virtual hearing and the staff that put this together. It's tremendous responsibility in these tough times to make sure each council member is heard, that these issues are addressed, and you are doing that amazingly. So I want to thank you for that. Uh, thank you to sponsors uh, and council member Rivera for listening to both sides of the story with her legislation and understanding there are some really good landlords out there trying to struggle and survive and work with their tenants. But a bill like this is needed for those who take advantage of the situations. So thank you to council member Rivera to hearing both sides and making some changes. And with that, I vote aye on all and God bless all. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to briefly explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. First, uh, let me just say uh, again, this is a great package of bills and I applaud all of my colleagues. Uh, helping to save our small businesses is possibly uh, one of the most important things that we are all charged with during this epidemic. Uh, I know that myself and uh, my husband are ordering out as much as we possibly can and eating some of the best food in Western Queens that uh, you'll ever have. Um, but this obviously helps uh, them even uh, that much more. And I wanna associate myself with Councilmember Powers' comments earlier. Uh, I too believe this uh, is an opportunity for us to, particularly during the warmer weather, allow for our restaurants, small businesses to uh, operate uh, on sidewalks and streets, uh, much in the way that we see in Europe allowing them to make the most of the warm weather months when even if they're in a position to be open, some folks may be hesitant to go inside the restaurant, but they might be more willing to dine uh, outside. And so we've got to seriously take a look at how we can help them make the most of the warm weather months by allowing people to sit outside uh, sidewalks and streets wherever and whenever possible. So uh, once again, I vote proudly on uh, eye on all uh, and thank uh, the speaker and all my colleagues uh, for all the work they're doing to help small businesses survive. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm starting now. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, I, first, I, I wanna begin the, like most of my colleagues have by acknowledging the hard work, the dedication of members of the city council uh, who are, are uh, incredibly thoughtful in their ways of reaching to try to uh, put forward thoughtful solutions uh, to address some of the needs of New Yorkers. On some of these bills, uh, uh, it's, it's a no brainer for me and I, I particularly wanna salute and thank uh, leader Steve Matteo, uh, Chairman Andy Cohen for their common sense measures to really help some, some of these small businesses who just need a little hand and uh, the foot of government off their neck. Um, on some of these bills, it was a close call for me really up until uh, uh, Councilman Vallone spoke a few minutes ago. Um, I, I'm going to vote in favor of uh, intro 1936 and 1914, although I, I do believe that the words threatening are, are so subjective and undefined that it gives me pause, um, uh, but he's right. You know, it, these are trying times and we have to protect the, uh, the good actors, but we have to make sure that the bad actors don't take advantage. And on, for that reason, I will be voting aye on uh, those two bills. Um, for intro 1898 and 1906, um, you know, the committee report on these bills uh, says it better than I can. Restaurant owners may, quote, may decide to list their businesses. Um, that's may, and they can also choose not to. And that's the point. Um, if businesses feel that they're not being treated right by the apps that they've contracted with, they can opt out. And that's the way it's supposed to work. I don't believe, although I believe that intro 1898 addresses an incredibly egregious practice, it's also contracted and agreed to by the restaurant owners. I'm going to vote no on intro 1898 and intro 1908. And uh, last, I will vote no on intro 1932, as I stated during the committee meetings, Madam President, my time is expiring. Uh -huh. I would ask just for a few more seconds to continue. Um, intro 1932, uh, in my view, is unconstitutional. It violates Article 1, Section 10 of the United States Constitution. It interferes with the contract already done. 
And um, that's, that's a basic statement of the Constitution. Now, I understand that there are those who will have a different opinion on it, and they're entitled to that different opinion. Um, but my oath requires me to look at whether or not this is constitutional, and my oath requires me to support the Constitution. So for that reason, I vote no on 1932 uh, with respect to the wise thoughts that went into all of these bills. So again, uh, just to recap, I apologize, clerk, if I didn't get this right. Um, yes, on 1916, 1940. Yes, on 1936 and 1914. And I am no on 1932, 1898, and 1908. And thank you, Madam President, for the additional time. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. You got it. Matteo. Thank you. Yes, on 1916 and 1940. I'm voting no on 1898, 1908, 1914, 1932, and 1936. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye on all. Speaker Johnson. I want to thank again all the staff and members for their hard work, uh, for uh, being flexible as we are trying to operate remotely. Uh, these last few weeks. So I want to thank everyone and I proudly vote aye on all. And I want to just thank Jason Goldman, my chief of staff, who's been working really hard around the clock with a small child at home like many people have been. He's been doing a great job in the midst of this and I'm grateful for him and his leadership. Please give us a moment as we tally up today's votes. <clears throat> Excuse me. The vote on all items for today's general order calendar is 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of introduction 1898A, with a vote of 47 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions, introduction 1908B, with 46 in the affirmative, four in the negative, and no abstentions. Introduction 1914A with 47 in the affirmative, three in the negative, no abstentions. 1930, introduction 1932A with 44 in the affirmative, six in the negative, no abstentions. And finally, introduction 1936A with 47 in the affirmative, three in the negative, and zero abstention. Thank you so much. And I salute and applaud all of my colleagues for passing this incredible package of legislation, particularly as many of you have been uh, faced with COVID, either yourselves personally or with your family and friends. And despite that, you were able to focus to put forward this strong package of legislation. So continue to heal, continue to get better. And thank you so much for your presence here today. At this time, all items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. We will now have the introduction and reading of bills. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. All of the bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Madam Majority Leader, the first three members to sign up for general discussion are Council Members Ku, Shin, and Gibson. Okay, we will begin in that order. Uh, Council Member Ku. Time starts now. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker and Majority Leader and all my colleagues. I just want to offer a reminder about the small landlords in our city who are also being hit hard by this crisis. We are not talking about large corporations who own properties around the world, but rather immigrant families who spend their life savings to purchase a multifamily home or a small building. I'm hearing from many of my constituents who own properties that they too are struggling to make their payments and maintain the homes of their tenants. 
their margins are already thin, and many rely on rent to pay property tax, water, and maintenance bills. Bills that continue to come and have been increased. The real estate landscape of our city operates within a delicate ecosystem of renters, landlords, property tax payments, and city services. If one falters, so do the rest. How are they going to pay their mortgages and avoid foreclosure on their properties? I understand the effort to provide relief during this crisis to everyone who needs it. Yes, renters need it. But so do our small landlords who are struggling to, pay, to make payments and meet their obligations as well. We need, we need to address this ecosystem as a whole and find a comprehensive solution for all. Thank you. Thank you. Now have Council Member Chen followed by Gibson. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I wanted to give a shout out to my colleague, Council Member Cohen, who has been a strong partner in affording opportunities for relief for SNAP recipient and immigrant street vendor community. Immigrant New Yorkers and immigrant run small businesses have largely been left out of federal and city grant and loan programs. If you don't have a social security number or you don't fall into a specific parameter as a business, then you're out of luck. These gaps are opportunity for the city to step up. So I wanted to thank Council Member Cohen for his leadership as chair of the Consumer Affairs for writing a letter to the mayor to create a city grant program to help immigrant street vendors survive this crisis. I'm also proud to join him on a resolution today to expand online delivery option for SNAP recipients. Every day, a senior or medically fragile New Yorkers had to take a trip to the grocery store is a battle. While many grocery stores are offering online delivery services, only a select a few online, uh, online retailer can accept SNAP benefits in New York, like Walmart, Amazon, and ShopRite. And even fewer can reach predominantly immigrant neighborhoods like Chinatown or the Lower East Side. Our resolution calls on the USDA to expand this program to more online retailers and ensure that income is not a barrier for vulnerable New Yorkers to get their groceries safely delivered to their homes. So I ask my colleague to sign on to the resolution. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Chin. We'll now have Council Member Gibson. Time starts. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker and all of my colleagues. And it's a great opportunity to come together virtually again for our second stated meeting. I am grateful to be a part of this body. And, and certainly the package of legislation that was passed today is really reflective of not only our priorities, but of the real need on the ground. Many of us have been out in our communities day by day, delivering food, giving out face masks and gloves and coordinating services, making sure seniors and homebound New Yorkers are really taken care of. And it has been really traumatizing. Um, what I've seen in my community of the Bronx has been heartbreaking. Um, I've cried many times because I think about people isolated and depressed and suicidal. And so I know we have some long days ahead but I'm grateful for each and every one of you, my colleagues, many of you I've talked to, certainly my sisters in the Women's Caucus have been such sources of strength and encouragement. And I just want to take this opportunity to continue to encourage all of you uh, during this budget season in the weeks ahead as we prepare uh, to vote on a budget uh, that is reflective of our values. We have to make sure that we protect our young people and families and our seniors and access to food and safety net programs. And I know it won't be easy, but I know that we are all in this together and this too shall pass. I look forward to more legislation coming down the pipeline that is COVID related in terms of relief efforts for small businesses, for tenants, for many of our small landlords that sometimes get you know, swallowed up by a lot of the bills that are passed. 
on end, uh, but there is a lot of work left to do. And I am mindful that we are all here for a given time and a purpose. And so I thank all of you for your work. I look forward to our continued work and really thank you to all of my colleagues for passing important bills today. And thank you to all of the chairs. Thank you guys and you all stay safe, thanks. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Madam Majority Leader, the next three speakers are Council Members Barron, Rodriguez, and King. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to offer condolences to those whose families are going through the suffering of having lost loved ones. And I just want to say that uh, we've got to be vigilant. We're going through some very challenging times. And as we're scheduling and getting into routines of what we're doing now, I hope that we don't lose sight that when we come through at the other end of this, we have got to make significant changes to the systems that existed before we came into this. And it's gonna call for us to be bold, uh, to be audacious and to say, no, we're not gonna go back. And I'm thinking particularly about the education forum hearing, which we had, I believe it was on yesterday, in which I said to the chancellor, uh, we have been subjected as black and brown people to systemic systems of lease and less, getting the lease of what there is or being left out altogether. And now is an opportunity for us to correct all of those systems that created those uh, resources that did not come to us and did not give us the full opportunity of what it was that we were entitled to, to do it boldly, not inch up to it, but to take the sledgehammer and to do it boldly. And I want to also say that in terms of the inequity that we are seeing how this police department is brutalizing black and brown people repeatedly, even though they've been uh, called out on it and told that this is not something that the DAs are going to uh, pursue in terms of them arresting people for social distancing. They continue to do that in black and brown communities while giving other communities a pass allowing them to gather repeatedly and not employ the uh, rules that have we put in place for, as my colleague calls it, healthy spacing. So we're going to be vigilant. We're going to be on it. I'm going to call out all uh, of those who are not applying this law equitably. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. I will now have Council Member Rodriguez as well as Council Member King. Time starts now. Councilmember Rodriguez, are you with us? Madam Majority Leader, Councilmember Rodriguez is experiencing some technical issues. Okay, so then we'll move to Councilmember King and then we'll come back to Rodriguez. Time starts now. Um, good afternoon again and thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, for conducting today's stated meeting. Um, I think we're getting some good things done for the city of New York. I also want to thank um, Councilmember Traeger and Drum as I viewed yesterday's education hearing. And thank you, Councilwoman Barron, for standing up for the inequities, but more for standing up and making sure that funding does not lose, we don't lose funding in the education field as we make sure that our most vulnerable, our children who did not ask for any of this are still able to be successful adults. So thank you both for three of you for your leadership in that hearing yesterday. Um, also, I want to wish everyone's family well during this pandemic and for those of us who've lost family members or just neighborhood members, um, continue to pray strong and thank the whole council for all the work they're doing to make sure that we make sense and trying to offer some sense of normalcy through this pandemic. And finally, for many of you who do know or do not know, the killing that happened in Brunswick, Georgia of Ahmad Aubrey, that was my family. Um, it's my cousin's nephew and I'm asking you all to stand with the family I'm asking you all, and I'm putting a letter together, and I'm asking Speaker Johnson, I'm asking the whole entire council to stand with the family as we put a letter together, sent to the governor, sent to the state of Georgia, that the hate that killed my nephew, my, my cousin's nephew, um, doesn't go unpunished. We need to make sure as the city of New York who stands and prides itself on fairness and fights against bigotry and hatred, that the city uh, of Brunswick knows that there is a city government outside of Georgia that's standing with them, just as LeBron James, just as Snoop Dogg, just as, um, you know, Rock Nation, just as 
Joe Biden. So many have written letters and made their statements known to let their voices be heard. So I'm asking this body, everyone to sign on to this letter to tell the state of Georgia that the hate that killed this young brother needs to be punished and never, never, never forgotten. Thank you all again. God bless. Thank you. And we stand uh, with you. Madam Majority Leader, uh, Council Member Rodriguez is not back on yet, but okay. we can recognize Council Members Miller and Cornegie while we wait for Council Member Rodriguez. Okay, Council Member Miller and then Council Member Cornegie. Time starts now. Okay, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, and, and thank you to my colleagues again, once again, for your leadership and your thoughtful uh, legislation that we put forth today. And um, we stand together. Uh, during COVID-19. Um, I want to uh, talk about intro 1941, which will provide health care coverage to families of municipal workers who have died from COVID-19, as well as resolution 1322 calling for the state to classify uh, de their death as employees of, of line of duty. Throughout this crisis, our selfless, dedicated municipal workforce have shown through. These sheroes and heroes have stood at the front line of the response of the city's response to COVID-19 with great courage and perseverance and personal risk to them uh, to preserve our own health, safety, and quality of life. Some 260 civil servants and public servants have lost their lives due to this dreadful disease, 10 of which from EMS, many EM, uh, NYPD and uh, detectives, 74 from DOT and more than 100 transit workers. Under the current rules, the uh, city's pension board uh, will rule these deaths as natural deaths causes. And we need to reclassify as COVID-19 in order for their families to receive the proper compensation that they are entitled to, as well as intro 1941 will, will provide um, health care benefits for these families as well. I'm asking my my colleagues to, to support their sign on and support this legislation and support these families who have supported us and have brought great value and dignity to our city. Um, I also want to acknowledge the, the, the comments of Council Member Barron and others that we cannot go back. We have seen the uh, devastation that had impacted black and brown communities, also law enforcement and other responses to these communities during these times and we need to look, move forward. So I'm asking everyone right. to keep that in mind and BLLC, BLAC is meeting immediately after. Bless you all. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Council Member Cornegie. Time starts now. Majority Leader, um, as has been mentioned by me on several occasions, this COVID-19 not only impacted me, myself and my physicality, but also uh, I lost uh, uh, to date, 41 members of my family, friends, and community. And I don't have enough time to highlight every one of them, but I'd like to take the time to highlight two because they were strong Black men who represented this community and were business owners. Uh, Jonathan Adewame, uh, who owned, uh, is part owner with his brothers in Amarachi, and Lloyd Cornelius Porter, who was formerly the owner of Bread Love and formerly uh, Bread Stye. Uh, these men demonstrated a commitment to their families and the community that is above reproach. And I think it should be noted that it was a tremendous loss and remains a tremendous loss um, in, in our community. Um, a lot of times uh, black males and black men are maligned uh, and the narrative is painted that they don't participate in their communities and they don't participate in their families. These men epitomized what it was like to be a man and they were taken away through this, this terrible virus. So I wanna take a, just a second to acknowledge both the families of Jonathan Adewame and Lloyd Cornelius Porter. Thank you so much, Council Member Cornegie and we share in your loss. Is Council Member Rodriguez available at this time? Okay. I will also join in uh, recognizing uh, a few members in my community that have also passed, um, as well as beyond. I want to recognize uh, Georgiana Glos. She is a nun activist of the Fort Greene Strategic Neighborhood Action Partnership. She was an icon on Myrtle Avenue and has done a tremendous amount of work and service in our community. I want to recognize Hazel Gale, who is an entrepreneur and one of the 
very prominent known uh, real estate brokers in our community who has done prominent work within our community. I also wanna recognize the art legend, uh, Louis Del Sartre, who is an artist. Uh, he was a professor at Morris Brown College. Uh, you can see much of his artwork on 125th Street in Harlem, as well as in Church Avenue in Brooklyn as part of the Arts for Transit program. He will be so missed, as well as Dr. David Driscoll, curator, historian, artist, philanthropist, um, who has amassed an incredible collection of African-American art throughout his time. And I also want to share with uh, Robert Carnegie, with Lord Cornelius Porter, um, an incredible family man, entrepreneur, and uh, was certainly on the ground with working to uh, bring equity and equality and experiences to Bedford-Stuyvesant that so many affluent communities enjoyed. He believed that they needed to also have that. And he worked alongside many, um, including myself, and he will certainly be missed. I also want to uh, associate myself with the comments of Council Member Inez Barron, the videos that we continue to see day after day of black and brown young people being attacked, to being thrown down on the ground, to having young women um, beaten as if they were grown men in the street continue to haunt us, continue to terrorize us, and continue to uh, take away any support or confidence that we have in our NYPD. And it's important that we move forward um, in respect for the over 20,000 lives that have been lost, that we come out of COVID-19, a better city, country, and, and world as a result of this. I think just to put a philosophical thought to it, when we think about the, the fires, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the earthquakes, the COVIDs, and, and all of these things that continue to uh, be brought to our front door, I personally believe that until we create the equality that this world is so desperately searching for, we can pass all the budgets that we want, we can pass all the laws that we want, but until we really see equity and to see it exercised and implemented and realized, these issues are gonna continue to plague our community because people are hurting, they are in pain, they are terrorized, they are traumatized, and that energy permeates this entire earth. So I hope that we can come out of this uh, certainly stronger than we came into this and recognizing the common humanity in all of us. Um, with that, um, if Council Member Rodriguez has not uh, returned, we will call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. The stated meeting of May 13th, 2020 is now adjourned. Everyone stay safe and healthy. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. people in space.